Hey folks, welcome back to Tech Tech and More Tech. I'm Carlo and these are HomeKit Hubs. As always, if you prefer a more detailed written version, head on over to techtechandmoretech.com or check the link in the description just below that like button. If you're just starting out your smart home and you're going down the HomeKit route, you may come across the term HomeKit Hub. It's not immediately obvious what a HomeKit Hub is since Apple doesn't sell a device with that name, nor does any other company for that matter. So in this video, I'm gonna go over what a HomeKit Hub is, what it does, whether or not you need one, and what devices can be HomeKit Hubs. To start off, HomeKit is Apple's smart home ecosystem. It can be configured and controlled from a home app on your iPhone, iPad, or Mac. Every HomeKit enabled smart home device has to meet certain criteria before it can be certified and sold as a HomeKit compatible device. HomeKit enabled devices will connect using one of two technologies, either Wi-Fi or Bluetooth. If it is Wi-Fi based, chances are it has its own mobile app, which will allow it to be controlled independently and work from outside of your Wi-Fi network. If you have a Bluetooth product, it will be connected to the device that you set it up with, unless you have a HomeKit hub. So if you connect it to an iPhone, that iPhone has to be within Bluetooth distance in order for you to control it. In short, a HomeKit hub is a device that basically works as a central communication point for all of your HomeKit devices. So if you change the state of a smart light from your phone, that command goes to the hub and then gets routed to the appropriate device. There are four devices that can act as HomeKit hubs, an Apple TV, a HomePod, a HomePod mini, and an iPad. In order to set up any of these devices as HomeKit hubs, there's very little you need to do. With the HomePods and Apple TV, they just need to be signed into the same iCloud account that the home is set up under, and they will automatically be enabled as home hubs. The iPad is the only device where you explicitly need to turn it on. You can do this by going into settings, go to your name and your iCloud and make sure that you are signed in with the account that you want home to work under. Scroll down and make sure that the home tab is turned on. Next, you'll go back to the main settings page and scroll down to the home tab and turn on the option that says, use this iPad as a home hub. If you wanna to check to see if it worked, you can go to the home app and tap on the little house icon in the top left. Select home settings and scroll down to hubs and bridges. Here it will show the different hubs you have and their status. It will typically say connected for one of them and standby for the rest, as one will be the main hub and the other will kind of work as network extenders. I would personally not recommend having an iPad as a HomeKit hub because it needs to be connected to your home Wi-Fi and plugged in all the time in order for it to function as a hub. This means that if you take it with you when you travel, or even if you just don't remember to plug it in, it will not function as a hub. Out of the other options, the HomePod mini is the least expensive option at $99 and is the one I would most recommend. It is a pretty good sunning speaker, so it's not like you're paying for just a hub and it enables the intercom feature as well as being a thread hub, which will be very useful in the future. There's a video linked below that talks all about thread and a review of the HomePod mini if you're interested. You may be wondering what the difference between a hub and a bridge is and whether or not it matters to HomeKit. Like I mentioned, a hub is a central point of communication for all your different connected devices. But HomeKit only supports Wi-Fi and Bluetooth devices. So let's take Philips Hue as an example. In order for you to control your Hue lights, you need to have a Hue bridge, because Hue devices communicate using a protocol called Zigbee. HomeKit doesn't natively support Zigbee, and neither does your phone or your router. So Hue made essentially what is a Zigbee hub to communicate with all of its devices. Within that hub, it is able to connect to the rest of your home network using either Wi-Fi or Ethernet, making it a bridge between your home Wi-Fi network and your Zigbee network. This is why you may sometimes see a hub or bridge required in the description of various smart home products. The hub itself is able to connect to HomeKit because it has Wi-Fi, which is supported, and it has been certified. By adding a HomeKit hub to your network, you unlock some extra functionality that was previously unavailable. Firstly, you can now control HomeKit devices remotely, both through the app and with Siri. Without a HomeKit hub, you can only control your smart home devices when you're connected to the same Wi-Fi network as them. So if you were to leave your house, 
you would no longer have any control over your smart home devices, but with a hub, you do. Another huge benefit of having the home hub is that you can now implement automations. I've said for a long time that automations are what truly make a smart home smart. Without them, you have a connected home, which is still nice, but automations take it to the next level. Basic automations include turning on your lights when you come home or turning them off when you leave home. You can also use things like motion sensors to automate all sorts of scenes and control other devices depending on certain conditions. I have a full video going over all the different automations I use in my smart home linked below if you're interested in more ideas. With home hubs, you can also allow other people to control your smart home. You have to invite them, of course, so it's not like a big security hole or anything, but now your spouse or your roommates or your kids or whoever can control the smart home from their phones, and you can also restrict them to certain privileges so they don't mess any of your settings up. Home hubs also can enable HomeKit Secure Video, which is one of the newest features of HomeKit that allows you to stream and record videos from your security camera. If you're interested in learning more about that, again, I have a video linked down below that goes into more detail. So should you have a home hub in your smart home? Well, if you're primarily Apple-based household and you want to use Siri and the Home app to control your smart home, then absolutely you should have a HomeKit hub. They are all dual purpose devices, so you're getting a lot of value out of them, be it a HomePod for music or an Apple TV as a streaming box. If you want to spend the least amount of money though, a HomePod mini is going to be your best choice. So there you have it, everything you need about HomeKit hubs. If you liked the video, be sure to like and subscribe button for plenty more videos to come. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them down below and I will get to them as best I can. And until next time, see ya.